Hello and welcome to Nikos TV episode 5. What a wonderful montage of pictures at the beginning set to a track Irving Berlin, there's no business like show business. We recorded that and actually released it on the 4th of July this year. But more about that and on. COVID-19, 2020, what a year. For, the, for Nikos, we had to make a decision. What were we going to do? Were we going to hibernate and do nothing until the whole thing blew over? Well, we like to think in Nikos tradition, we did it the other way around. We pivoted a lot of our activity online and it runs the whole gamut. We did national courses online. We trained hundreds of people from right across the world in the work of Zoltan Kodai. We ran our regional choirs online and every day between March and June, we had an online daily activity to keep the nation on its toes, singing songs and doing actions. Zoltan Kodai said, start the training of the child nine months before the birth. And one of our most colorful activities are our mini music maker classes. Check these out. They're usually across the country in nine or 10 locations. And we pivoted those online and entertained and educated young people for many, many weeks. Listen, listen, here I come. How many beats on Elizabeth's drum? Excellent drumming, Mrs. I think there might have been, does anybody want to guess first? Emma says four, Daniel says four. Both Emma say four, was that right, Elizabeth? Shake and shake and shake and stop. Shake and shake and shake and stop. Shake and shake and shake and stop. And then we'll shake some more. But forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and up and down and up and down and round and round and round and round and ready to start again. Yay! Good job! What a lot of colour and energy in the mini music maker sessions. I live next door to a school and a few weeks ago it was wonderful to hear the sound of children playing in the playground again. But in March it really wasn't like that at all. With schools closed, we met at NICOS to wonder how could we support parents and teachers to help keep Scotland singing. Our solution was a series of daily online activities. The very first one aired on March the 23rd. It's called Senwa de Dende and it's been viewed over 7,000 times and it introduced the world to presenter Karen Clark. Hi everyone, welcome to the first of what we hope will be many NICOS online videos. We hope over the next few weeks and months to bring you every day a very short clip of a song, a musical activity or a game that you can do at home with your children or if you find yourself in a school setting you can also try it there with the children who are there as well. So the song we'd like to bring you today is a song from Ghana called Senwa De Dende and it goes like this. That was one of the simpler songs and actions, I can tell you. Some weeks later, the daily activities morphed into something we called the We Summer Sing. It was five weeks of activities, including one week of Gaelic song, and it was aimed at five to eight-year-olds. Karen was joined by three or four other presenters. One of them, John Thompson, who lives in Inverness, got very, very inventive. He's kind of a whiz with a camera. He multi-tracked himself, invented a character called Oran, who's a puppet, and let's see what that turned into. Hi, everyone, and welcome to day four of my journey across the sea. I've got a guessing game for us to be. I've hidden something in my mystery box. And if you sing me this song, Sailor, sailor on the sea, Sailor, sailor on the sea, Sailor, sailor on the sea, What treasure did you bring for me? Then I'll give you a clue as to what's in the box. And if you can guess what's in my box, then you can keep it. It's now, a banana! No, no, Horan. It's not a banana. Oh. Bye! 
Wait, 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 wait. Don't you want to know what's in the box? Is it a banana? Well, no. If it isn't a banana, then I'm not interested. Oh, Bye! Hold on, hold on. How's about if you can guess what's in the box, then I give you a banana. Oh, it's a cup, a horse, a sea lion, a fish, a plastic no, bag, no, cucumber, no, kettle, no, 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 no. Those are all wild guesses. You've got to sing me a song and then I'll give you a clue. Ah, let it go. Not that, so not go. that song. Oh, but I like that song. Yes, of course you do. No, this song. Sailor, sailor on the sea. Sailor, sailor on the sea. Sailor, sailor on the sea. What treasures did you bring for me? Is there a TV series in that? Who knows? We Summer Sing morphed into something called Sing and Smile in July. There's a lot of concern as to what this lockdown is doing for us all, uh, no more so than Scotland's young people. And with help from the Wellbeing Fund, we started a three-strand project, Sing and Smile. There were videos uploaded for pre-fives, there were videos uploaded for five to eights, and we ran a songwriting class for young people between the ages of nine and 12. You know, you heard Karen say at the beginning of her videos that she hoped this would be the first of many. Well, over the six months, we have uploaded 163 videos and they've been viewed from all over the world. People have commented on social media and on Twitter. Uh, some of them have been uh, done in association with British Sign Language. You saw that in the opening montage. And some people even took the opportunity to send us a video of them doing our activities. Have you ever, ever, ever in your long-legged life seen a shark-legged sailor with a cross-legged It's time to hear our national choirs. The daily activities early on had an activity Monday to Thursday. And then on Friday, we gave people a treat with a recording of one of the national choirs singing. How bittersweet to hear this sound, knowing that we couldn't create it this year at all. Seeing Donald's face at the end of that clip there leads very neatly into the next big innovation of the summer. As part of the online residential course for the National Youth Choir, I wanted to introduce something really quite special, quite unusual, and I called it Nikos TV. What happened was I would record interviews with some of great Nikos friends, some of the people who had been members in the past, some of the conductors and composers that we'd worked with. Uh, you heard me say at the beginning, this is episode five, the previous four, the very first one, we had um, Jimmy McMillan, uh, and then we had Donald Runnicles. The second one, we had two young singers who'd been in Nikos, who have moved into the Scottish traditional folk um, world. And um, in the third one, we had a masterclass from Karen Cargill. And in the fourth one, I got to interview, oh my goodness, Eric Whittaker. Let's see some clips from Nikos TV. Hello, lovely people. Welcome. This is a brand new Nikos activity. We are having a new project for 2020 and I'm nicknaming it Nikos 
TV. I've got a few guests which I will welcome and interview. We're going to play some music. Lots of different things will happen. What have you been doing during lockdown? Is there um uh, have you been taking the opportunity to uh, f- uh, file your CD collection, or um, have you taken the opportunity to write a piece of music that you didn't think you would have had time to write? Well, I have written a lot of music these last few months, um, I, and and in many ways life has gone on as normal for me. That, that's what composers do. We're, we're used to this isolation. We need to be isolated. We we need to be. We need to work in a an environment of uh, uh, silence and solitude. Um, so in that sense, it's been life as normal, but just that little bit more intense. One of the things we're looking forward to is, um, and I'm announcing it here, uh, there is a hope that uh, you and Nikos will, will be together again in 2021. You've asked us mm-hmm. to sing Durufli Requiem. Woo! And so um, very grateful for your ongoing um, faith in uh, the, the Nikos singers. Um, I have to tell you, Nikos sings the Bejesus out of uh, the Durufli Requiem. So I can't wait to be doing that with you and the BBC SSO. That's so brilliant. Thank you so well, much. Christopher, if I had my way, I'd be working with you in the chorus every week, every second week. I mean, it's just the logistics of being in all these different, on, on these different continents. I want to dance with a Highland girl. Where the skies reach out for miles I want to feel the biddies of the Hebrides On the far side of the world Cause I want to dance with the Highland cattle Where the skies reach out for miles I want to feel the biddies of the Hebrides On the far side of the world And then when I went into high school I realised the importance of uh, learning more about the voice And um, and so I got a classical uh, singing teacher at, at Fort William um, Christopher Josie Who... who wow. Uh, now I think is based up in Inverness, but at, at the time we were really lucky to have him in Fort William. Um, and uh, then I did a, 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 a well, actually about that time it was about I was twelve years old when I started with 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 Nikos. Um, I auditioned. I came down to Glasgow and met yourself for the first time, Christopher. And um, always, always a shock. The first time's always a shock. <laughs> well, I, I I remember being very nervous because. Uh, for a boy from the Highlands coming down to the big city is quite a big experience anyway, but to come down and then uh, do this thing for the National Youth Choir was, was quite something. This will probably last another year, right? God knows when it'll be really safe for us to all come back. But I truly believe, I truly believe that th- that there is this kinetic energy that's building, right? You can feel it. People, I think, all over the world are like me. They're aching to make music together. Mm. You know, yep. I, I, I didn't realize that it was for me oxygen. I, of course, I love music and I can't imagine a life without music, but having it taken away, doing what we do, being in a room together and making music, I just had no idea how much it ached. And I believe that that feeling when we're finally released and we can all sing together, I think we'll actually enter like a genuine golden era of choral music. On the 8th of May, almost three and a half years after we had done the first recording session with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, we were able to release our new CD, Cantos Sagrados. It took three and a half years because there wasn't enough material at the original recording session, so we needed to do another one. And by the time the machines and wheels work, it took a little while. But it was significant for a number of reasons. It's actually 20 years since the sound of the National Youth Choir of Scotland has been captured on CD. It was the first recording of the orchestral version of James Macmillan's piece, Cantos Sagrados, a piece that I commissioned with the RSNO chorus way back in the 1990s. It was a great thrill to be able to do the premiere recording. As I said, on July the 4th, we also released a little bit of Irving Berlin, which was recorded at that session three and a half years ago. All this served to remind us of the power, commitment, passion, and an extraordinary diction of the National Youth Choir of Scotland. woke you up. What did you say? You know, only 
three or four weeks after lockdown started, we were supposed to be running our residential courses for the National Boys and the National Girls Choir. We rushed to couple together some pre-recorded material, which we put online, and many of those boys and girls did take part in that activity. But it taught us one very important thing. The one missing aspect was the personal connection, the chance to meet your friends, the chance to sing together. And so when it came to July and the National Youth Choir of Scotland course itself, we did something very different. We organized a three-day Zoom course from nine in the morning till nine at night, mimicking the way a course usually is. We had warm-ups, we had sectionals, we had singing lessons for the training choir. We had tutti sessions for absolutely everybody. And in the afternoon, when there would have been recreation, we had optional sessions. We included sight singing, we included how to read a score. I did a course on introduction to conducting, very short course, and we also had yoga courses. I did not do those. In the evening, as you know, we introduced Nikos TV, and then there was a bit of a party, either a quiz or something like that. At the very end of the course, there was a Cayley, very successful, I'm told. I'm told the Zoom for that finished at 2.30 in the morning. I had to be told because I wasn't there. Here's a little montage of the activities of the National Choirs this year. One, two, three, four. Hello and welcome. How fantastic is this? Do, re, mi, do, ole. I am here. We're just creating that nice space at the top of the line. Tetra court. So here's bar 36. Beautiful singing. Thank you, thank you. Then it's sopranos, followed by tenors. I want us to think about our posture again. Three and four. Well done, everyone. Give yourselves a big stretch. I know what you're thinking. Tetrachord. Tetrachord. What on earth is that? Well, every year we run a Kodai musicianship course during the summer at Merkston Castle School. And if you attend that, you'd find out what a tetrachord is. We weren't able to do that, of course. Normally we get up at Merkston Castle School about 90 attendees. When we announced that we were going to do it online, we got, now the statistics are so bizarre, I can't remember them, so I've got a little card. Um, we ran 20 workshops over five days. We had 320 people attending from 23 different countries, including Australia, New Zealand, and China. Three of the sessions were so oversubscribed, we ran them again two weeks later and had 253 people attending those. It's a bit hard to capture just exactly how that all goes, and you're not going to get an explanation of the tetrachord, but here's a little clip of a session that was called Songs and Games from Southeast Asia. The song that I am show, uh, sharing with you is actually sung both in Malaysia, in Indonesia, as, as well as Singapore. I hope one of the themes that's emerging in these Covidian times is that we took the opportunity to keep our activity going and indeed to do some new and challenging different things. These times have actually given us an opportunity sometimes to address some things that we've wanted to do for years but couldn't find a way to do them. For years we'd wanted to offer musicianship classes to people and couldn't work out how to work with the small groups all over Scotland. Well, if you bring them all together on a Zoom, you can do that really very easily. And now that people are used to working a little bit more on Zoom, they were really interested in doing it. We ran some musicianship classes. There were 110 participants in 13 classes at five different levels. The people participating came from all over the world, including China, Hong Kong, uh, Kenya. And tutors were from Hungary, Australia, and of course our very own Kodai Supremo, Lucinda Gagan, here in Scotland. Here's a little clip of Lucinda baffling some people with a task to do, baffled me, um, and then in a minute we'll talk to Lucinda. So the arrow thing that way means clap click. Clap click for the arrow. The triangle means clap shoulder shoulder. 
one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, so it's a two, four bar, a three, four bar. And whatever I sing here, obviously I'm in two beats, but you've got three beats to answer here. So if I do, do me so, your answer will be, so ti re. Or go up the way, I don't mind. You can go up the way to the dominant or down the way. So my question has to be 2-4, your answer should be 3-4. If you want the same rhythm, of course you can leave a rest. Does that make sense? So if I do do mi so, you might want to go so ti re and have a rest. But I would think the most logical thing to do would be so ti re. Here we go. A couple of those and then I'll tell you what's next. Do mi so. So me do. Oh, what did I do the second time? Hello, Lucinda. So. Hi, Christopher. Where are you? Where are you? And how are you? And how are the people around you? I am at home, funnily enough, and have been at home for quite some time. And it's actually quite nice being at home. Everybody's well. Everybody's well here. I'm very lucky that I live very close to my daughter, so that's grand because we can just see each other frequently. My son's a bit further away, don't see him much, but the most important thing, we're all well. Well, that's absolutely brilliant. Now, you've, you've hit on it. You and I usually spend a lot of time traveling the world, doing various things. We've been locked down at home, uh, and uh, is it true to say, and I <laughs> think I know the answer to this, despite lockdown, you're busier than ever. Um, funnily enough, I am actually, and if you'd asked me that question at the beginning of lockdown, I thought disaster had struck and we were never going to do anything ever again, um, but very quickly realised that that wasn't the case, as I think you did. Well, I mean, is it possible that some of the things we're doing are actually better because they're online? I think it's certainly opened doors for a lot of people. It's made it uh, much more accessible, the things we do online. I've had feedback from lots of people that I couldn't attend a course before for a number of reasons. It's too expensive, don't have the money, um, I have young children, I have a dog, I can't leave the dog. Um, so actually all of these things have come on, on the screen. In the little screen at the courses, I see the dog jump up on somebody's knee or somebody sitting with a toddler. That's great, they can attend the course and they can, they can be at home. And look at those statistics, Kodai at home. Look at all those countries and people getting up at goodness knows what time in the morning to attend a class or attending at 11 o'clock at night or we've had people from all over the world. It's really been, been fantastic. So how do we see, you know, we do hope that in the future we get back to some sort of new normal. Um, how do you see that panning out? I mean, uh, what do you think the future holds for Nikos and for Nikos musicianship and for Lucinda Gagan? Look, if I'm being honest, and you're probably of the same opinion as I am, I can't wait to sing in a room together with other people. That's the one single thing that I desperately miss, the inspiration and the community feel from that. And I'm sure that will happen. But I think the online thing is here to support that live thing from now on. So I'm seeing actually, it's kind of forced us to do something we never thought we would do. I would never have done this through choice. And actually, I really enjoy it. I love it. So I think that live thing can be supported now through online support activities. Summer school live, but actually we can do musicianship every week. Isn't that great? We can just continue to do that thing. Well, look, Nikos is grateful for your energy, for your thoughtfulness, for the inspiration that you give to people absolutely all over the world. You and I have been friends for many, many years. I think when we met first at university, we maybe didn't realize what the future held for us. But what a fabulous future it's, it has been. What a fabulous time we've had. Nikos, 25 years. Can you believe it? 25 years. <laughs> I actually can't because in my head I'm still 25, but sadly, um, when I look in the mirror, I'm reminded, no, I'm not 25 at all. It's been a, an amazing journey and who would have thought? And onwards and upwards, that journey, we're only along that pathway. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. So that's us bang up to date with the Nikos 2020 story. Right at this very moment, we're putting the final touches to our regional choirs and they'll be starting up week beginning of 14th September. For anybody who doesn't know, NICOS has 15 regional choirs dotted around Scotland. Weekly singing opportunities for young people right across the country. In April, we went online. We're staying online September through to December with the fervent hope that we will be live face-to-face -face at the beginning 
of January. For all the people watching, thank you very much indeed. To friends and supporters, you know, when we were unable to run our full residential courses, we had to refund those course fees to people. But many people donated part of their fee back to us, a very generous 22 thousand pounds to friends supporters the trusts and people who made donations right across the board including our regional choirs thank you so much we finish with a beautiful little song that was recorded by the national girls choir at their residential course way way back in april at the beginning of this whole covidian period it's a song that holds out hope one candle light a candle for the future Don and Obis Pachem, give us peace. Thank you so much for listening. This was Nikos TV episode five. Christopher Bell, artistic director and host. Look forward to seeing you again in the future. If you're not a subscriber, click subscribe now and you'll find out about future Nikos videos. Thanks to the Nikos team, in particular to Rachel for helping to put together this video. See you in the future.